You got little alien house guests. Let's see them. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth. We never knew happiness or love or any emotion when we came here to your Earth. I've just begun to learn. Hello there. My name is Dr. Anton Jessup, curator of monster studies here at the university. The recent disorder on campus has allowed me to reclaim my rightful classroom, and I've already begun to re-educate today's youth, as well as a few special guests, with a little monstrous sexual education. The boys have already received their lecture, and as they make their way to the study hall, we turn to a topic of paramount importance for all of our female students. Yes, I speak of that nefarious threat from beyond the stars, alien husbands. Perhaps your mother already told you this, but the dating pool is full of good boys, bad boys, and of course, extraterrestrial humanoids with an insatiable desire for Earth women. Why, some of them seem to think you ladies are easy. Even robot-headed beasties have been known to develop an illogical attraction. Just watch these Martians drool over a tantalizing beach, babe. Their dying race needs our breeding stock. And indeed, 1958's I Married a Monster from Outer Space explores just what happens when a bachelor from an all-male alien species visits Earth in order to procreate with one of its more fetching female specimens. Watch out, ladies, he's a shapeshifter. Having lost all of their own females to extinction, the aliens abandon their doomed homeworld in search of a proxy species for reproduction. Of course, human females ultimately prove too uncooperative, and while impervious to bullets, the aliens were no match for hungry German shepherds. Poor driftwood-faced aliens. If they'd only stuck around a little longer, they might have won the lady's heart, or at least learned to use a dog whistle. They might have even found out that they're not the only all-male species on the planet. Can anyone here name another one? Miss Varel. <coughs> exactly. We turn now to the corbicular genus of freshwater clams. Technically speaking, corbicular clams are hermaphrodites. Each individual produces both egg and sperm, but the fertilized egg always ejects the egg genes, regardless if the joining of egg and sperm is asexual or sexual in nature. As a result, corbicular clams are all essentially males engaging in clonal reproduction. Cloning is wonderful. It allows a creature to forego costly mate selection allows termite queens to continue on after a king's death, and certain ants to abandon males altogether. But these benefits come at the cost of genetic diversity, opening the door for copying errors and widespread disease. Fortunately, monosex species tend to employ a loophole or two, and the corbicular loophole is right out of the alien husband playbook. Steal eggs from another species. According to a 2011 study from the University of Texas at Austin, all the monosex corbicular clam species likely descended from a single proto-bachelor species. In order to replenish their genetics, their related species simply bred with each other. The vast majority of these sexual encounters results in just another male clone. The fertilized egg jettisons the female genetics as usual, but on very rare occasions, perhaps just once in a million generations, genetic recombination occurs. A miracle child is born, replenishing the species genes. Yes, ladies, that handsome slab of alien beefcake might not have the purest intentions at heart. He might prove incapable of your human romance, love, or couple's tennis. But if you're looking for a real star man, and don't mind birthing a few million moon babies in the process, he might just be the fella for you. 
Now, Maxwell, if you bring in what's left of the male students and in transmission. What does all of this have to do with the uptick in monster sightings throughout our city? In clinical trials, test subjects reported uh, gastrointestinal aversions, uh, changes in sexual performance, fungal lesions on the brain, and some small cases of internal delusions being manifested into physical reality. But I assure you that 